Mi que no. <laughs> Another learning. This is it. Don't show this to me again. <laughs> I hate you. I'm home. Who's home? Hey, Pixis. Haven't seen him in a long time. Back on his feet. That is certainly a riddle. As usual, Armin way ahead of everyone. There is something kind of mystical about them. The Wallace were right. That seems to be where this is going. Titans as the wall, it seems. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah, they had a, a bonding moment last episode. They had a great time. Nick looks very happy. Erwin always has a plan. Here we go. I'm pumped to be on another expedition so soon. Hopefully it goes better than the last one. What do you know, Armin? I see Armin has fully accepted this Titan wall theory. But if Armin thinks so, it must be true. Because Armin is never wrong. He knows everything about everything immediately. So I'm officially accepting that as a thing. The walls are Titans. Yeah, they know something they're not sharing. But I'm guessing there's a good reason for them to keep it close to the chest like that. So watching Ilsa's notebook, they talked about the Ymir people, right? Which makes me think that there might be sects of people with conflicting interests. And if there's something like an ongoing struggle, it would make sense why they would be secretive about it. But we know he's really convicted. I feel like this guy knows more than Aaron does. Yeah, you can always shoot him. You could also give him a courtroom stomping. But have you tried stomping? Exactly. He knows something important, and he has good reason for this. Sasha alone. Oh, is this some Sasha backstory? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> what is this translation? First dang nabbit and then the world is a change in. <laughs> so bizarre subtitles aside, that was an interesting scene for Sasha. It seems like for some reason she has this antagonistic feeling towards people outside of her community. Or maybe she feels like people who are outside of her world are antagonistic towards her. She's very defensive, right? It's like, this is my thing and everyone else stay out. But I think her father, I'm assuming it's her father, nailed it when he called her a scaredy cat. That's how that feels to me because I know that impulse when things are going well or things are comfortable, things outside of what you know and what you're used to can seem terrifying. But there's a fragility to that. It's similar to what we've seen before about people in the walls where they're kind of blind to the risks, right? It's like, well, we've been safe so far, but there's sort of no avoiding it. And I think there's an honesty and a maturity in seeing that and realizing that there's no turning a blind eye to it. Like this is happening. And if it's not happening today, it's happening tomorrow. So I like that this guy realizes that and he's looking for ways to help. And it's nice because it's something I'm always looking for in the show. Like, I'm wondering where that line is going to be, right? Because we've seen so often one of the main ideas of characters is survival of oneself is the most important. But here we have someone who's actually connecting it to something higher, right? Like helping people out and making sacrifices for others and thinking about the well-being of the group. And that scene feels like a moment of maturation for Sasha. It's like the end of innocence, where even though it's painful, now she's connected to the broader world in ways she can't ignore. And that's kind of cool in context of her rushing back to save the village, risking herself and, you know, being alone in the forest. He doesn't seem like the fleeing type, to be honest. 
Brace yourself. What gave it away? <laughs> this world is not safe. Well, they made farmland. I guess they cleared out the trees after all. Is that a person or a titan? It must be a titan. It's too big. I thought it was a cannibal for a second. I was about to say so much for farmland. Get... go. <laughs> Get out. She's in shock. Don't look. Get him, Sasha. Oh yeah, she doesn't have her gear. Oh no. <laughs> I guess it's done with that lady. No gear, no horse. They just abandoned them, that's awful. That was what old Sasha might have done. Or, it's not what she would have done, probably, but that is kind of in line with what she was saying about how let other people handle their own problems and, like, you know, we just do do us. Maybe it's just the culture of this village, I don't know. Maybe being, like, outsiders or nomads or whatever. But clearly highlighting something for Sasha. I mean, she's obviously changed a lot through the core and joining the military. It's nice to see Sasha actually get some development and actually, you know, have heart. Because I've always liked her, you know, ever since the potato incident. But that was somewhat humorous, and since then we haven't really seen that much of her, except that she's sort of, like the other cadets, she's coping with, you know, the world and the titans and everything. But I like the Sasha focus, it's very cool. Nice upper body strength, damn. Keep telling yourself that. She's giving herself pep talks. Hence the weird subtitles. Mmm, that actually explains it a little bit, what I was thinking about earlier. Her antagonism about others, outsiders of the village, is connected with her feeling of others' antagonism towards her. I guess in Sasha's mind, she perceives a disdain for her and her people from others. I bet she does. <laughs> I mean, the ideas or intent behind that make sense, but she's so abrasive. Thank you, Goddess Krista. Huh. Stop. Thank God for that. Yeah, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. She's smiling. The connections she's made, I guess. Don't leave her alone here. Making a stand with a bow and arrow? But where do you even shoot it? You're not gonna hit the back of the neck. Two arrows, two eyes. Don't like those odds. There you go. Don't think about that. <laughs> what? What is she gonna do it just with her hands? Like a javelin? Oh, I see. All right, you did it, now get out. Get out of there. Go. Oh no, she's getting a titan hug. There you go. There he is. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something nice about how this is a character exploration of Sasha and how much she's grown, how much she cares about others, but doing it in a way that incorporates her original lifestyle, like the, the life that she knew when she was young that she was trying to protect. And I guess the flashback is connected to that. Because Goddess Krista was saying that Sasha is Sasha. She can still be 
authentic Sasha and use the gift she's been given, but avoid hiding from the world and instead use who she is to actually make things better. I mentioned End of Innocence, right? Weirdly, this does kind of feel like a coming of age thing, right? It's like a connection of her root identity, who she is, to the actual world without hiding from it or being afraid of it and connecting herself to it in a way that, that is authentic. It's kind of weird to think about it that way, given the craziness of this episode and the world that we're in. But to me, it feels like a very condensed growing up story for Sasha. It's something you see often in stories and it's something I like a lot, right? Where you start off in a sheltered existence and then something forces that existence to cause you to crash or enter a new and turbulent existence where you question where you came from and question your values. Then you cope with that, right? You're out in the world trying to make sense of it all. And then the, the resolution to that that feels satisfying is that you come full circle, but you're, you're better now than ever. You rediscover who you were initially, but now stronger than ever because it's rooted in real life values and you've dispensed with a lot of the illusion and fear. Now she is coming back and using the skills from her childhood environment and using it to protect her hometown, but she's so much better and stronger now and she doesn't need to hide herself as much. It's a very quick, small hero's journey. She did. Sasha. <laughs> And we get the acknowledgement of her changes, which is nice. I'm home. Homecoming. Oh yeah, Connie has to go through the same thing. Right, because that, that Sasha thing felt good. And we can't end the episode that way. So here's Connie. <laughs> Hopefully they fled. Oh my god. Hello. Is he dead? What is he doing? And what's up with his little T-Rex arms? Is that Connie's dad? <laughs> Sunny? What? I'm not- I don't know what that was. Is that the birth of a titan? Well, it could have been a lot worse. Going by how the show likes to end with tragedy. It's not clear to me yet what happened to Connie's family, so I'm just gonna believe that they're fine for now and just go with that until proven otherwise. But yeah, overall, actually, it was kind of a, a nice, optimistic episode. It was a great character journey. You know, season two began and we had this epic monkey thing, monkey confrontation. So my expectation going into this was not like a focused character episode, but it was a nice surprise. Like I've always liked Sasha, as I said. So it's nice to see her character substantiated a little bit because I think she hasn't really had that much focus, except for like the hints that she was from a forest village and was good at tracking and things like that. She feels good. You know, she feels like a good person. And in a way, it feels like a self-contained story from her from start to finish. You know, like her origin being skeptical of others and distrusting others to her being willing to sacrifice herself to help others, but in a way that is very much her, you know, very much authentic to her and not ashamed of who she is and what her skills are. And that's kind of cool to see in a show like this where, you know, I feel like the characters go so deeply down this dark road of like survival at all costs. You must become an animal to beat the animals. Sasha did become sort of animalistic attacking that titan but she never lost herself right like she seemed like she was just protecting that girl which is cool overall a relief just to have a moment of you know something nice but yeah that's the end of season two episode two i'll see you next time when i'm pretty sure we'll jump right back into the trash niche.